How did an army of rabbits take down this medieval castle? And why you should never explore the terrifying top floor of Castle Rising Castle. As promised, you will not just discover the saga of how a legion of bunnies fearlessly overran a formidable fortress, and share the spying tingling accounts of the mad ghost of a queen haunting the very corridors and visitors encounters with her still occurring today. But we're about to embark on an epic odyssey to unlock the castle's astounding defenses that would make invaders think twice whilst unearthing its pivotal role in the storied history of the illustrious English monarchy. 1138 and a captivating tale of nobility and grandeur, William Daubigny II, a distinguished nobleman, embarked on a remarkable journey that forever altered the course of history. He dared to wed the widow of King Henry I, ascending to the title of Earl of Arundel and amassing unimaginable wealth. That's the real town of Arundel in the south of England, not the town in that Disney movie. Though the real Arundel is possibly more spectacular than the Disney version. More about that in another video. It was with these boundless riches that he forged Castle Rising Castle, a testament to his undying love for his beloved wife. The keep, a masterpiece of architectural prowess, emerged in the majestic hall keep design, mirroring the grandeur of the Norwich keep. Fashioned from brown castor and ashlar, it spanned approximately 24 meters by 21 meters. To fortify its towering walls, wood was skillfully integrated into the stone masonry, creating a structure that soared to a formidable height of 15 meters. Gracing the exterior of the keep were four turrets, sculpted by corner buttresses. Honestly, you are all so immature, adorned with intricate Romanesque designs, that continue to captivate visitors to this day. It is believed that William's motivation for such ornate detailing was a desire to flaunt his opulence above all else. Yet, while the keep boasts impressive aesthetics, its defensive role was that of a last refuge. Apart from its stout walls and limited arrow slots, elaborate defensive features were scarce. Nevertheless, the keep's pinnacle likely sported crenellations. What truly elevates Castle Rising Castle to legendary status is the opportunity for visitors to step back in time. They can ascend its grand staircase, wander through its halls, chambers, kitchens, and marvel at the relatively well-preserved chapel. The castle's outer precinct comprises three distinct baileys. The Eastern Bailey, a guardian of the inner bailey entrance, fortified the castle's defenses, while the Western Bailey once stood connected to the castle. It now remains apart. The inner bailey, an elegant oval, encircled by towering earthworks rising to a staggering 18 meters, originally standing at a more modest 9 meters. These massive earthworks, combined with the protective walls and towers, formed an almost impregnable barrier, thwarting attackers and rendering rams and ladders ineffective. In the medieval era, Castle Rising Castle boasted three towers, with two perched upon the encircling banks. The precise location of the elusive third tower remains a mystery. Similarly shrouded in historical obscurity are the positions of the towers and gates within the curtain walls guarding the west and east baileys. Notably, the gatehouse, in its original grandeur, surpassed its current stature. Equipped with a porculus and a morbican, it represented the pinnacle of defensive design. For any potential invaders seeking to breach the formidable inner bailey, they faced a rather daunting dilemma. One option entailed scaling the towering 9 meter deep moat, ascending the walls under the relentless barrage of arrows and plummeting rocks from vigilant defenders stationed atop. Hence, their only viable alternative was to launch an assault on the imposing main gatehouse. As they ventured down a perilously narrow bridge, they funneled themselves into a lethal choke point, granting the defending archers a distinct advantage. Upon reaching the initial portcullis, the invaders had to muster all their might to break it down. Yet, once they breached that first threshold and ventured into the Barbican, they were met with a nightmarish spectacle of mayhem. 
the defenders rained down projectiles through machicolations. Arrows shot relentlessly from all angles, and murder holes added to their misery. Storming through these defenses required an unimaginable force. The intricate layers of defensive architecture, coupled with the colossal earthworks, proved so effective that no army other than an army of bunnies, which we will come to shortly, ever dared to fully challenge the might of this fortress. Instead, the historical journey of this castle, entwined with the course of history and the lineage of the English throne, remains a tale of intrigue and paramount significance. 1145, in a bold endeavor that promised to ignite the very heart of Castle Rising Castle, William embarked on a journey to establish a mint, sanctioned by the crown itself. The prospect of striking coinage within the castle's formidable walls held the promise of prosperity and prestige. Yet, as the mint's machinery hummed to life and coins began to bear the mark of castle rising, a shadow of uncertainty loomed. The winds of change swept across the land, and King Henry, in the wake of the tumultuous anarchy, tightened his grip on regional mints. The castle's once promising mint found itself in the crosshairs of royal scrutiny. 1170s after the rebellion against King Henry II, Castle Rising Castle underwent extensive renovations. The earthworks were heightened, and the western bailey was filled in to create a sturdy platform. 1220 to 1230, the castle embarked on a captivating journey through the hands of William Dalbini II descendants, a tale of inheritance and legacy, finally arriving in the possession of William V's valiant brother, Hugh. As Hugh assumed control, the castle's destiny hung in the balance. 1243, in the wake of Hugh's departure from this world, his legacy remained untarnished, for he had bequeathed Castle Rising Castle to the esteemed Roger de Montalt, scion of a baronial dynasty renowned throughout the land. The castle's fate was now woven into the tapestry of Roger's life. Subsequently, the castle found itself under the guardianship of Roger's steadfast brother, Robert. Within the castle's formidable walls, Robert and his devoted wife, Emma, would carve out their own chapter of history, a tale of love, power, and the enduring allure of the castle. 1327 to 1329, Robert's stewardship of the castle endured for a considerable span. Yet upon his passing, leaving no heirs to carry his legacy, the castle found itself in the hands of the crown. During this era of transition, the castle witnessed a series of significant changes. The keep soared to new heights, its walls raised even higher. A fresh roof was gracefully placed atop its grand structure. In 1329, as the curtain fell on Robert's chapter in the castle's history, his devoted wife, Emma, made a decision that would shape its future. She relinquished her rights to the castle, passing them into the hands of none other than Queen Isabella herself. This pivotal moment would leave an indelible mark on the castle's story, forever intertwining its fate with the pages of royal history, 1330 to 1358. While many tales suggest that Isabella's son imprisoned her upon discovering her involvement in his father's murder plot, the reality paints a more nuanced picture. In truth, Isabella savored a life of opulence within the walls of the castle, where she would reside until her passing. Isabella, often remembered as a queen shrouded in darkness and cruelty, played a pivotal role in the dethronement and eventual execution of her husband, King Edward II. As the years wore on, Isabella's life took a tragic turn. Afflicted by dementia, she descended into a maelstrom of confusion and violence, lashing out at relatives and castle staff. It is said that her restless spirit lost and tormented, still roams the castle's confines. Guests have reported eerie occurrences, particularly on the upper floors of the castle, where manic rambles and chilling female laughter often echo, lending credence to the belief that her restless soul remains ensnared within these ancient walls. Now, a brief interruption to emphasize the importance of historical accuracy in our exploration of medieval history. If you come across any inaccuracies, or feel that I've overlooked crucial information, please leave a comment. Your feedback helps both myself and my audience in my quest for knowledge and understanding. And for a comprehensive timeline, history, visitor information, and available ticket discounts related to this site, please refer to the link in the video description.
With that said, let's return to our riveting journey through Castle Rising Castle's captivating history. 1360s, following the passing of Queen Isabella, the mantle of Castle Rising Castle's custodianship fell to none other than Edward, known to history as the Black Prince. Under his vigilant watch, the castle underwent a series of meticulous repairs and improvements, with one of the towers receiving particular attention. The legacy of the Black Prince, whose true name was Edward of Woodstock, endures even in modern times. This remarkable connection to the royal lineage continues through a precious gem, the illustrious Black Prince Ruby, which now graces the Imperial State Crown of the United Kingdom, the favored regal headpiece of the King of England. The journey of this exquisite ruby is a tale of international intrigue. It found its way to the Black Prince through a chain of ownership that included a Spanish king who pilfered it from an Afghan prince who, in turn, acquired it from the depths of a mine. A mine, not a mine, to clarify. This gem's rich history, like that of Castle Rising Castle, is a treasure trove of captivating narratives. 1378 in a bold and historic maneuver, King Richard II orchestrated a remarkable exchange, trading the esteemed castle for the equally illustrious Chateau de Brest, a prized possession held by John, Duke of Brittany. The political landscape of the time brimmed with intrigue, and this transaction stood as a testament to the king's strategic prowess. Yet, as the wheel of fortune turned, King Richard II faced a tumultuous downfall. His reign came crashing to an end. And with it, the legitimacy of the grants associated with Castle Rising Castle was cast into doubt. The castle, once a symbol of power and prestige, now stood at the center of a legal quagmire, its future hanging in the balance. Early 1400s, the kitchens, once bustling with culinary artistry on the castle grounds, met a dramatic fate as they were razed to the ground. In their place, a grand new range rose, a testament to the castle's ever-evolving saga. 1461, amidst the backdrop of decaying castle facilities, life persisted within its formidable walls. It continued to serve as an active hunting facility. 1482 to 1570s. From 1482 onward, the once majestic castle began a steady descent into decline and decay. A relentless march of time took its toll, and by 1504, the keep, once a symbol of strength, was deemed rotten prompting urgent calls for repairs. Despite efforts to breathe new life into the castle, with fresh additions, the problems seemed insurmountable. As the years rolled on, by 1543, Castle Rising Castle had fallen into a state of utter ruin. Its keep stood with a collapsed roof, while the great hall and great chamber floors had crumbled into oblivion. Regrettably, the castle's deterioration continued unabated. In a bizarre, an almost comical twist of fate, the castle would succumb to a destiny more embarrassing than a fart in a crowded elevator. What could possibly befall this once mighty fortress? None other than a relentless invasion of rabbits. Yes, a sprawling war, a kingdom for bunnies, established itself on the castle grounds. These furry invaders dug in and tunneled throughout the colossal earthworks, leaving crumbling walls and unstable foundations in their wake. This peculiar tale stands as perhaps the only known instance of a rabid army conquering a medieval stronghold. But this was not the end of the castle's story, as an amazing discovery was set to be unveiled within the grounds of the Bailey. Skip ahead about 30 seconds to see what. 17th century, the castle's plight grew even more dire, as its keep saw its very floor excavated for materials to be repurposed in other structures. The apartments within the four buildings once bustling with life and accommodation, lay silent and abandoned. As the castle continued its inexorable descent into decay, a glimmer of hope awaited in the distant future. The 19th and 20th centuries would herald a period of restoration, breathing life back into this historic site. A discovery was made on the grounds of the inner bailey, as excavation unveiled a grand Norman chapel. Before the awe, Inspiring Castle Rising Castle graced this historic site. A majestic chapel stood proudly upon its grounds. Today, the enchanting remnants of this chapel can still be explored by visitors. This is Warkworth Castle, 
If the tales of the ghostly Queen of Castle Rising have left you on the edge of your seat, then brace yourself for the spine-chilling legend of the Grey Lady of Warkworth, guaranteed to haunt your dreams. Alternatively, if you've been enraptured by the sheer magnificence of architectural wonders, Warkworth Castle will not merely impress, but utterly astonish you. Here, you'll discover one of England's most breathtaking and meticulously preserved keeps. Join us on an exploration of this remarkable site, where history comes to life in every stone, in corridor, 